Howdy y'all. Long time no video, like usual. In this video, I'm going to be talking about reducing the cycle time of 2D contours, particularly chamfering operations, and particularly operations where you have multiple levels, like this part here. This is something that I have actually milled a couple times. Uh, at least parts very similar to this. And I recorded some video of that. And while re reviewing the video, I really noticed how long it was taking for the chamfering tool to get from above the part down to the level where the chamfering was actually taking place. What I'm going to talk about in this video is not exactly rocket science or anything like that. But it's something that I've been delaying trying to figure out. And I figure, you know, maybe you guys have too. And why not put a video out about it? I should mention that I haven't actually posted the code that I'm going to be generating from, you know, the techniques that I'm talking about in this video. But since it's pretty simple stuff, I don't think there's too much of a, of a worry that something's going to blow up as a result of what I'm going to talk about here. But, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Even if I had tried it for myself, your results may vary and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to that uh, actual footage in a second. While you're watching it, pay particular attention to when the tool is going from here down to here. It's only, you know, the, the entire operation is about 35 seconds. So it's not spending a lot of time doing this. But also take note of, you know, the fact that it's doing nothing other than cutting through air while it's doing these plunges and, and how much time that is actually wasting. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, and as you saw, that took about 35 seconds. Also, if I check the machining time estimate here, Fusion 360 is also estimating that it'll take 35 seconds. Uh, to be honest, this was saying something else, but I rejiggered these numbers until, you know, the, the time was the same. Since I haven't posted this code out and tested it, this machining estimate is my, my biggest clue of how much time will actually be saved here. So I'll be checking the estimate throughout the video. So really, all I'm trying to do is just reduce the amount of time to get from here to there. I think a good place to start, or to start examining where we can save some time here, is to look at what we've got. So let's do a simulation. I'm going to do this simulation where it shows the tool pass and the solid model. And by clicking and dragging the mouse through the work area left and right, I can uh, scrub through the, the simulation, which is pretty cool. So let's take an overview real quick. So we got the part and we got our tool paths. And the tool paths have a few different colors to them. There's a blue, a red, a green, and a yellow. As you can see, the tool is currently on the yellow and the yellow is a rapid movement. So any of these yellow lines are rapids. And just to really drive this point home, these rapid movements are where the tool is going as absolutely fast as the machine is capable of going. So there's no opportunity for, for increasing any speed there. As I move through this, we can see that the the tool enters this red line and the red line is a plunge and uh, the plunge basically dealing with this plunge is going to be the main focus of this video so I'll get back to that in a second after the plunge after the red 
it gets to this green section here and fusion is labeling this as a lead-in and obviously that's where the tool is going from outside the part leading into inside the part where it's actually performing the cut after the lead-in it reaches the blue section which is a cutting feed rate in this case a finish cutting where it's actually performing the milling this blue section right here is already basically optimized for the tool in my opinion so this blue line is another place where i really don't have much of a chance of of changing the speed so the yellow lines are going as fast as they can and the blue lines are going at the at let's say the correct speed if we go back here we do have the lead in and if we get to this point we also have a lead out and sure you know we could change this a little bit but these are really i mean these are obviously quite short you're not really going to solve much by changing the speed here so really what we're going to try to do is speed up the time that is currently being taken doing these plunges the way i see it there are basically three ways that you can increase the speed uh, that is you know that these plunges are taking right now you can increase your plunge feed rate that's definitely an option i think that's the worst option i will show how to do that i'm assuming most of you know i'll do it at the end so you know if you're tired of the video just turn it off before you get to that part the second option would be to lower the point where this plunge starts so right now we're starting up here if we started the plunge here instead it would be shorter and therefore it'd take less time that's definitely an option as well and that's a that's an okay option and then there's what i would consider the best option which would be to actually eliminate this plunge and turn it into something faster something like a rapid alrighty so uh, let me show what I think is the best solution to the time taken with this plunge and that is to basically eliminate it thankfully this is also like the easiest option what you got to do is just go edit your operation go to the heights tab and get this feed height here and change it change the from drop down to disabled now we've disabled the feed height setting we hit ok and now we don't have any red vertical lines as we can see when the tool starts it's going to wrap it all the way down to here and then it's going to start what it considers the lead in um Oh, so let's check the machining time here. That saved eight seconds. So we started at 35 and are at 27. I'd say that's a pretty big savings. And this is a really a pretty simple operation. This thing's only got five separate areas that it's machining. So it really would normally only do five of these plunges. If this was a much more cha uh, much more complicated chamfering operation, or maybe like a um, a V bit letter engrave, particularly with like sharp corners in the uh, edges of the letters, the corners of the letters, you might have like let's say eight plunges per letter, something like that. So if you're spending a whole bunch of time plunging into every single little corner of every single letter it's just going to be taking forever to finish on that note let's say you think you know this is a little too long as best as i can tell that distance is controlled by this setting right here the safe distance right now it's set to one i'll bump it up to 10 just for illustration purposes and now we can see this this green lead-in plunge is, is real long. 
obviously if we then you know want it real short we might set it to let's say a quarter millimeter and we can see that these uh lead-in plunges are really short it is possible to set this to zero and it will generate as long as you ignore this warning but then you're going to get this warning message in your cam tree and uh, i guess maybe sometimes these are unavoidable but i personally try to avoid them at all costs so i would set this to a quarter millimeter which is close enough to zero instead of actual zero and have to look at this warning all the time so i really think that's basically the best way to approach this but there is uh, a couple other ways and I'll, I'll try to go over them real quick. So let's set this back to where it was. Oops, from the top height, plus five millimeters. And the linking safe distance is still at one. So here we are back where we were. And as I mentioned, I think the second best way to, to reduce the time taken doing these plunges is to just make these red lines shorter pretty pretty basic so far so we can uh, go into the heights tab once again and instead of having an offset of five millimeters from the top height we set this to one we've got five plunges we just shaved four millimeters off each one total of 20 millimeters yeah definitely something if you're doing a you know a hundred of these that's um that's a pretty good savings Unfortunately, though, if you have, you know, widely varying surfaces like like I do in this, you still have to deal with this long plunge here. So let's see if we can get rid of that. Unfortunately, we sort of run into what I consider bug territory at this point. So uh, bear with me. Normally, what I would expect you could do here is change the feed height instead of starting from the top height which is the total of this box here aka the stock top plus zero we can change this top height to selected contours so normally what i would expect this to do is take these selected contours in our geometry tab and offset one millimeter in the plus direction Unfortunately, though, when I hit OK, we get a, a, a toolpath that's basically exactly the same as it was before. And there's this little, like, warning thing over here that I hate so much. So let's see what the warning says. It says, lifting feed plane to topmost lead height. I don't know about you, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. We can sort of decipher it a little bit. Lifting, so it's, that's the action it's taking. It's raising something from, from low to high. <laughs> it is raising the feed plane. All right, so that's what we're just messing with. That makes perfect sense so far. Where is it raising it to? To the topmost lead height. So to me, that sort of loses meaning there because I could see myself thinking, all right, you know, maybe I'll go change this lead height and, and you know, that, that'll fix this error. Unfortunately, though, in the heights tab, there's nothing in here called lead. So there's no lead height. There's a feed height, but that's what it was changing. So, you know, I, you know, it's not a typo trying to say feed when it's, when it actually said lead in the linking tab there are the lead-ins and transitions i guess but none of these are like a height um so my best guess is basically it's saying that it's raising it up to the highest lead-in or something i don't know it doesn't make sense so that error is no good. Let's uh, let's undo that. All right. So now we're back to the one millimeter above the top height, like that. 
All right, so as we mentioned, the top height, sorry, the feet height is based on the top height. And so this is just taking the cumulative value of this and sticking it in here and then offsetting by one. So something we could do is change this top height to the selected contours. So essentially what we just did, except we're doing it down here. When we hit okay to that, the tool, the tool path generates correctly. And we have these short, uh, sections of vertical plunging here, basically just like we wanted. However, there is, there is still a problem with this. And this is that this, um, plunge height is based off the selected contour, not off the tool path. So if this tool path is way down here for one reason or another, then it's still going to be starting the plunge way up here. So to sort of illustrate that, let me change this to a different chamfer mill. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. Oh, actually, I got a 3 ace one here. That's good enough. So if I do this one and tell it to, you know, let's offset the tip by five millimeters. Now this, this tool path is way down here and we're doing this plunge, you know, this kind of great distance. So we're sort of not really helping the situation by starting at the contour. It's okay. It sort of works, but it's, it's not the greatest. There are also some situations where you're not going to want to have the top surface be your selected contour. This part isn't exactly like the best example of that, but I do think I have uh, something that works here. Let's say this is the first side that I'm milling and I'm holding this stock in the vise. So if my stock ends right here, I'm obviously not gonna be able to do this exact tool path here, right? Um, Cause the tool will be cutting into my vise. So if I edit this, look at my geometry, this is the, the best contour that I can select to mill at least a lot of this stock here. I don't, I don't really have this contour up here anywhere. I suppose if, you know, if you want to get real technical about it, you could like pick this and then edit it and turn it into a loop and like get this part and down here. And eventually you can get it. Not the end of the world there, but even at this point, that con contour may not be exactly where you want it either. So in those situations, you'll want to probably select the most convenient contour and then simply change your bottom height to, you know, maybe take, um, this surface and then go, let's say about four millimeters or something like that above it to give your vise a little bit of room for, for clamping. And now this tool path will, well, you know, machine a lot of this material away, but it won't cut down into your vise. But if I had my top height set as my selected contour, I now have my top set here, you know, well below where I'm actually milling. So my top would be below the bottom of the milling, which is, which, uh, just bad practice in general. But I, I think, um, Fusion 360 cam might throw an error if you try that too. So really, although, you know, Changing this top height to the selected contour can work. It's not always the best. Okay, uh, lastly, let's look at one more method, the worst method that we can use to shorten the length of time it takes to do this, this movement here where there's currently a, a plunge. And that is to simply increase your plunge feed rate. So right now this thing is taking 35 seconds. That's because 
when the tool hits this plunge feed rate, it drops the feed rate to 551 millimeters a minute. That's pretty slow. So, you know, knowing that 551 is slow, we can just go into the tool library, edit the tool, and change this 551 to something crazy. Let's say 10, 10 times faster, 5,500 millimeters a minute. Hit OK. It's going to say, hey, you're going to mess with like all kinds of tool paths by messing with that tool. Whatever, Fusion. Yeah, I'm, I know what I'm doing. So I'll hit yes. Close the library. And now you can regenerate these this tool path. It looks the same. But if I do a machine time estimate, it's dropped it to 28 seconds. That's obviously because when it's getting to that that plunge section, it's now going at 5,500 millimeters a minute. Honestly, in this exact situation, it's only going to go 5,500 until it hits the bottom, in which case it'll uh, move over to the lead-in feed rate, which is fine. So this, in this exact instance, that change would not be a problem. However, changing your tool in your library in order to fix one tool path is basically just an idiotic way to go about it. I don't want to go into it a big a whole bunch, but it's dumb. Don't do it. So this whole time I've been looking at this operation here, this chamfering operation, and I mentioned that it's a 2D contour. Just like this 2D contour operation has these plunge feed rates, other 2D contours are going to have it too. So here's one where this uh, tool is going to the bottom and doing a finishing pass around the bottom here. If this plunge feed rate is exceptionally slow, it's going to take a long time to go way from the top to the bottom. So a good way to fix that is just disable this feed height. Boom. That's going to wrap it to the bottom, do a tiny bit of lead in, and then do the the uh, the profile. I'll undo, go back to the old tool path. We'll take 11 seconds and eliminating the feed height setting does indeed save one entire whole second. So it is an improvement. And again, if you're going up and down a whole lot, you're going to see more and more improvement. I hope this was useful. I hope this, uh, Saves you guys some time. And uh, hopefully the next video will have more than 35 seconds of machining in it. Alrighty, see ya.